Yaskawa. <laughs> This video shows how to set up the MP2600 IEC controller. Here's a quick preview of everything I'll show in this video. After wiring and checking DIP switch settings, use the built-in web server to set the IP address, clock, and clear the SRAM. One reboot and the controller is ready to go. Now let's go through this procedure in more detail. As outlined in the MPIEC quick reference guide, document number qrg.mp2000iecseries.01. Whether you just took the controller out of the box or you have a controller of unknown configuration, these steps will help you get up and running. The MP2600IEC comes with a lithium battery for the SRAM that must be installed. Squeeze to remove the case. Insert the bracket. and secure the battery holder with the screw. Connect the extension and slide the battery into the holder. Snap the case back on and connect the battery. Next, check the dip switches. Only the config switch is normally set on. All the others are normally set to off. Config on at power up allows the controller to configure the servo pack and internal I.O. Leaving it on does not affect the operation of the controller. Install and wire the amplifier and servo motor according to the Sigma 5 option user manual. Then power up the unit. Expect the alarm light to be on at this point. Now the final phase of the setup is to connect to the controller's built-in web server and set the IP address, clock, and clear the SRAM. Connect an Ethernet cable between the PC and controller port CN11A. A new controller has the default IP address 192.168.1.1 on port A and 192.168.2.1 on port B. If the controller is not new, you can still use this address, but you have to reboot the controller with the eInit switch on. Type the IP address of the controller into Internet Explorer, and the web server will appear. For more details and some troubleshooting, please see the e-learning videos on setting the IP address of your PC and connecting to the controller. Next, log in as admin with capital A and password MP2600 all caps. This opens up the full menu item list on the left side. Under Ethernet config, enter the required IP address of the controller. It can be left at default, but I'll set this controller to 192.168.15.61. Leave the subnet mask at 255.255.255.0 and then click Update CN11A Settings. I'll leave CN11B at default. Please note that CN11A and CN11B must always be set to different subnets. Down the page to Global Settings, enter the IP address of the gateway device if you have one on the network. If there's no gateway, then match the default gateway to the IP address. Since I don't have a gateway, I'll enter again 192.168.15.61 and then click Update Global Settings. Under Alarm Status, there are SRAM and Clock Alarms because this is a new controller. First, let's take care of the clock under Set Clock. The date and time in set clock appears in the alarm history and debugging output and must be set. Notice it's 24 hour format with time zone. Auto run should be checked. Then click set date time. For synchronized with network time server, the controller must have access to the network time server during operation. Most factory networks do not have such access, so this feature most often goes unused. Now I'll take care of the SRAM alarm under Initialize SRAM. Click Reinitialize SRAM and OK. 
To activate these changes in the web server, you must reboot the controller. The config switch should be on and init should be off. Choose reboot, reboot controller and OK. The controller is rebooted when the ready light is on. To connect again, adjust your computer's IP address and connect to the controller's new address. The alarm status shows that the alarm history was corrupted due to the SRAM initialization. A quick peek at the alarm history shows it's blank. This alarm can be cleared and the alarm is added as the first in the history. After these steps, consider updating the controller firmware and please see the video on firmware update for this step. Once the firmware level is correct, please see our videos on starting up from a project archive or starting a new project in MotionWorks IEC. Thanks for watching this video and remember yaskawa.com slash IEC for application notes, videos, firmware updates, and more.